Welcome back RVers, Josh RV Nerd with Bish's RV down here in Middlebury, Indiana today, actually on Coachman's Grounds, getting my first look, finally, well my first fully detailed look at their new 226 RBS. Um, and this is a very similar floor plan to some other things I've seen, like Rockwood and Flagstaff have a real similar thing, and they're each going to do a couple things the other one doesn't, and I'm really glad we actually have another entry in a floor plan like this, because it seems like, first of all, Let's uh, hear it for the boys uh, and girls and Hot Pockets down here that they actually included a full-size camp kitchen with a big fridge and a real sink with a real drain. Those things have become about as rare as hen's teeth out there nowadays. Now this falls, I think, generally within the, the tow package half ton category, or if you got the really big class SUVs, maybe, maybe this could work, because it's uh, not too heavy, it's fairly short, really, uh, and it has wide stance stability axles, all of which give you some nice, easy towing function and factory standard TPMS. This is an Asdell laminated lightweight with a very unusual quality. It has an extra tall ceiling, which most those lighter weight trailers don't do because that tends to add more weight but they compensate for that with a lot of lamination and aluminum framing and working their way around it in different ways this also is a 60 by 80 true queen bed which a lot of murphys are the shorty mcshort pants beds where your feet hang off the end of them you won't if you're taller like me if you're taller than me it may be an issue but if you're you know a little over six foot like i am it won't be quite so much of a deal heated enclosed belly it has an outside griddle in addition uh, to kind of complement that camp kitchen the griddle station under the awning and the camp kitchen door is tall enough that even I can walk under it to help uh, add some shade. Now there's some things like it is a, a bendy McBed basically so that you may have to kind of deal with your, your, your bedding a little bit every day. Um, I haven't closed the slide, but eyeballing it, I don't think you can use the bed on this one with the slide closed. But trying to give you fair information and closing the slide and showing you and verifying all that, those are all things that we're going to do today. So if you appreciate the extra insights and the in-depth information that we provide, like the video as we go, leave some comments, let me know what you like and dislike and how they could make it better and what they should improve on. Let's get dug in there. Hey, you got anybody named Doug that works here? No, 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 they don't, they don't have a Doug. And, and first of all, you know, I like to kind of sit down and absorb these for a few minutes like a customer would. Uh, you know, when people are shopping for a lot of RVs, if they're real serious, I'll see them really sit down and kind of try it on for size. And you see different things when you do that. Like, for instance, under that overhead cabinet, you see some kitchen outlets. But thankfully, you got that pop-up power tower down there in case you got the short cord appliances. But I also really zeroed in on the fact that, especially with the bed down, you have some fantastic kitchen, or pardon me, window coverage. Um, I mean, you know, all around the slide out where I'm sitting right now, there's windows everywhere. You've got the, the front wind shield when the bed is down, which nothing says you necessarily have to put the bed away, especially with this being more of a couple's model. Maybe you just want to leave it down like that all the time. But if you're going to have some guests over or when you're closing the slide, you just put the bed away. That is totally up to you how you decide to kind of uh, handle that. Now, there is no shade in the entry door, so kind of keep that in mind, uh, you know, for privacy's sake. And if you are looking for a little bit more space, you can just get the bed out the way. And if you really start doing the math, we have a 60 by 80 True Queen bed up front, and we have a sofa and a U-Dinette. This RV has the seating uh, of like a, a, a big super slide RV, but it only actually has just the U-Dinette slide over here. And that's kind of the cool thing about Murphy beds. Like, I've seen some people say, I, I heard these things, these Murphy bed RVs were supposed to somehow be, you know, like shorter and lighter and less expensive. And I've compared to other things this size and I'm not seeing it. And that's the thing, you, a Murphy bed, you're comparing against something that is actually larger that doesn't have the, the compact overlaid features that this one has. Now up top here, that is, if I'm not mistaken, just a vent. It appears I am correct. If uh, this doesn't have a laminated roof though, so if you wanted to run some power to that and install a fan, that is something that's possible here. And despite the fact this is a short model, we do still have central air keeping you very nicely evenly cooled. And this also has a little bit taller ceiling. It's six foot nine tall. They're not exclusive with that extra interior height, but there are a lot of RVs that don't do anything like that. And uh, sometimes it can be very nice. Now, a couple extra little details. 
Uh, you might notice if we look right down beside the sofa, and keep in mind, you see how you can walk right beside the sofa because the storage goes under the headboard of the bed instead of under the sofa? It means you can actually walk around the bed more easily, but there's household and USB outlets uh, on both sides of that. And you may notice all those little silver handles. There's actually uh, a lot of storage around this, and giving you a look at this, keep in mind we're clipping over into wide-angle mode for the, the bed you know, Burt Reynolds demo that I got going on here. But there's storage all around that thing. There's not storage above it. But what is neat is you still maintain a fully functional, fully um, unobstructed pass-through storage compartment uh, in that RV, or in this RV as well, due to the, the bed system that we're looking at right here. And again, that is a 60 by 80 true queen size, albeit a bendy bed. And with this one, you do have to kind of contend with the slide out to make sure uh, you're not going to run into, um, you know, the, basically the bed has to be folded up and put away to close the slide for transit. Although we're going to actually physically show you that, demonstrate that in a bit. And I keep choking on thin air over here. I don't know what's in the air out here. Um, we are carpetless, we're ventless, we're easy cleaning. I love it when the slide floor and the main floor match like this. Freedom Express was one of the first brands after open range I saw uh, adopt that, and I still think they're doing a fantastic job. And you may notice, other than the windshield and the window uh, in the door, everything in here uh, opens for some pretty sweet airflow. Now, it's kind of funny. When I looked at the entertainment center, let me sit down over here like at the sofa. That's another thing that's really good about this one. If you are stuck inside, when you're sitting on the sofa on a rainy day, you put the bed away. You've got the perfect, uh, I think, viewing angle on this. But something else to consider, if you get that table out of the way, which is very easy because that's a elliptical-based floating table, you could actually kind of use that over there like a little bit of a corner lounge. And depending on how you feel like stretching out, if you, again, are going to be stuck inside here for an extended time, uh, the, the TV viewing in this is, uh, I, I think, pretty good. Of the different manufacturers who build a layout like this, I think this is one of the best entertainment-focused versions that I've really seen out there. Now, uh, working our way around here, we have all sealed edge press membrane counters. And something else, they've kind of done it, then they went away from it, and now it's, you know, it's back, basically, is a stone cast sink. And I want to point that out, because on camera, it looks like a plastic sink, but it's not. If I, uh, let me set this down, do the old wedding ring test. You can actually hear it clack in there. That ain't what plastic sounds like. That is 500 degree rated. So, uh, you know, you could pour boiling water into it and it's not going to cause any issues. That blue package uh, over on the left side of the screen, that is our tire pressure monitoring system that's included with this. You'll see like a little yellow antenna thing up on the front of the RV. That's like the, uh, the relay that talks to that monitor that you keep in the RV. Uh, just kind of give you the uh, frame of reference right there. Now, looking around through all the kitchen, it, the, the L-shaped kitchen is going to be very nice when we're in camp mode like this. And I'm going to start you with some storage up here and look around. When we close the slide, I think that L-shaped kitchen might present a little bit of an issue for uh, trying to access the RV in transit. That might not be the best strength that this uh, coach has right here. We're looking at the 12-volt compressor fridge, which is pretty much going to be the standard, and I, I don't know if they plan to even continue offering a two-way in the future with the very limited supply from manufacturers of two-ways even being produced nowadays. Now, that dinette can fold down into a big sleeper. Notice how there's even easy access storage to the rear bench, but this entertainment center, man, when I first looked at it, it looks physically almost identical to the, the, the entertainment centers they put in some of the bunkhouses where the TV can spin around to face the bedroom, if you're familiar, like a 257 BHS. I thought it was that, and I was like, wait a minute. Is this TV able to flip around to be watched literally from the toilet? Could this be like the ultimate toilet TV camper? And come to find out, no. It's just a seriously awesome pantry tainment storage. And the magnet system holding that shut? <laughs> That's no joke, brother. I had to like really reef against that thing it works really well now if you want a little more peace of mind it probably wouldn't be too awful hard to add like an extra little uh bullet latch or something like that just the same kind of latch that holds the murphy bed shut that would be probably a very easy thing to uh include right there um i think we're good in the living room area let's move our way back to the bathroom uh one of the nice things here with this being a little bit tall you'll see that i have extra headroom in the shower 
And I don't know what it is, a window in the bathroom, it always churches up the joint. Uh, the left side of the camper, as we're facing it currently, is the, uh, the camp side, and that's occupied by a big camp kitchen, but they still left us some really nice space around that toilet. That is porcelain uh, bowl, that is a foot flush. You may notice, though, they are using a radius shower, and that jelly is not everybody's jam, because uh, as you can kind of see up here, uh, it's got great headroom for someone like me who's a little bit over six foot tall. The elbow room, meh, you know, it's it's okay. Now, if you angle your body so that your elbows are going corner to corner at the biggest part of the radius, it's better. But some people have a, a larger stature than me, and it might not fit them very well. And I'm just trying to be real, and that's that kind of extra insight and in information I like to give you here. Not a lot of countertop space in the bathroom. Um, so I, I, you know, the idea some people might have of what they need to build this with a rectangular shower. They do that in some of their other models, like a 252 RBS. So I know it's not necessarily impossible. I don't know if it necessarily fits within the footprint of this exact RV, but whipping our way around here down below, I mentioned the camp kitchen is back here. So that's like the back of the fridge. That's why these vents are here. Uh, and by the way, if I angled down a little bit further, don't want to make you motion sick, so I want to let you know, that is a heat vent down by the floor, so it does have a heated bathroom. That is an oversight I've seen some manufacturers make before, but looking up here, all of this is above the camp kitchen, and brother, that is a big honking chunk of storage capacity right there. I used one of those sink covers as a little bit of a frame of reference, and all the way through the top of that, it's actually a, uh, a clothing hanging rack. So if you have extra clothes you want to hang up, those you could put in here too. And as promised, taking a look at it with the slide closed in road mode, uh, my fears appear to be realized. The accessibility on this will be limited for transit. It's a good traveling model for length reasons and the wide stance stability axles and the TPMS and the Asdell and all that. But as you notice, like you can't even fold down the Murphy sofa. There's no way to open and uh, deploy the bed here. And at a glance, it looks like you're not really able to access anything else in the RV, but maybe? And this is what I mean. There's a couple ways around this. First of all, if you had to, you could do the butt scoot boogie and put your backside on that countertop and sit on it and spin on it and, and flip your way around and hop over the countertop. I don't recommend doing that on top of the sink covers, though, because <laughs> these sinks are not rated for American-sized butt weight to be placed on them. Um, so that's not an ideal workaround, but it's it's an option. It's a workaround. Be smart. Be careful about it. The other thing, again, be smart. Be careful about it. I actually can't recommend you do this. I'm saying that it is something that somebody could choose to do. You don't really want to occupy slides like this when they're closed. If you very lightly, gingerly step in that and then walk your way around it, you could get back to the kitchen. You could get back to the bathroom. That option is up to you. But one of the things here is this is a rack and pinion slide out. And one of the benefits of a rack and pinion slide is that if you open it just a little, you're not gonna screw it up. You still don't wanna occupy the slide, but if you wanna make a little bit of floor space and create yourself uh, a little space on the catwalk, yeah, on the catwalk, hey, do your little turn on the catwalk, you could get back there, you could get to the bathroom. Now we start talking towing, looking at those specs on the left side of the screen. I, again, I do think this falls nicely within the realm of half ton towing potential. Now it doesn't have like the world's biggest holding tanks or anything like that, but this isn't made to be like some off-road, off-grid, mega extreme kind of uh, boondock camp or anything like that. It's a camper that could kind of bleed a little bit in between. There is an optional solar package uh, that you can put on these at the time of this filming. That is one of the things I think more and more manufacturers are going to start standardizing more and more solar. And with uh, two-way gas electric fridges uh, really almost on their way out of the industry, I think it'd be really wise for manufacturers like Freedom Express to start looking into something like that. Now, uh, your roof is fully walkable. Tell you what, I'll probably give you a look up there in a little bit. Um, we have a, uh, uh, what do I want to say, like an aluminum perimeter around a wood 
constructed roof, which is interesting. But what it does is it makes the roof better line up, match up, and marry up with your laminated sidewalls, which have Asdell on the inside and outside layers, by the way. It's what I call a double Asdell camper. And again, the short length of this combined with the wide stance towing axles, uh, you know, she's going to handle well. And I don't know if, if you were really paying attention to those specs on the screen. This has a serious cargo capacity. This is one that you can really, you know, pack heavy. You like, there's so many campers I'll look at that have just tons of cabinet space, you know, like that big hidden pantry tainment center, you know. Um, but you can't actually put anything in them. You know, the, 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 the cargo carrying capacity is too low. You don't have that problem here. You could probably, I don't know if you could ever really overload this though. That sounds like a challenge. I know somebody could. They have magnet holdbacks, which I like by the way, but it, they, they lock. You have to manually release them. If I let that down, you can see that they have the kind of sealed protected hinges. And this is what's called a key like system. It's not the same. If, if you know what a 751 key is, uh, this don't have that. And if you don't know what a 751 key is, good news, you don't have to learn. It's just not an issue on here. The, the short, stubby nature of it with the big camp kitchen door does mean the awning gets hit in the face with a Nerf bat a little bit, but the big camp kitchen door, you can walk under it. So I'm kind of curious, you know, they I, I don't really know if they possibly could shift the camp kitchen forward to make room for the awning arm behind it. I don't think that's possible because that big square door above that uh, cardboard box that's containing our griddle, that is the back of the refrigerator. I don't think you can shove the camp kitchen forward at all. I think this is the best they could come up with. In a perfect world, if they could have extended the awning, would have been neat, but I think they did just fine here. Which, by the way, uh, now that I'm mentioning it, uh, standard griddle included with the camp kitchen, which is kind of cool. And for these uh, wide stance stability axles, you do have factory standard TPMS. So uh, going down the road, you can keep an eye on your tire health, basically. Over next to our stable steps, uh, which are just under an anti-slam door, mind you. You've got TV hookups and the drunken uncle leash latch right here. So you can, uh, you know, it's got a dog bone shape so you can, you know, throw your dog a bone. I, I, I do suppose, I don't know. I was looking for something there and I, I think all I found was nothing. <laughs> but this right here, this to me is the focal point of the outside of the camper, a full size camp kitchen not the not the little squish down one that you see so many rvs have you got a big fridge although it doesn't have any kind of inverter so the fridge doesn't operate in transit kind of keep that in mind hope you appreciate the extra insight and clarity even if it ain't pretty there uh, a real sink with a real drain you got a little bit of counter space out here although remember you got that little shelf with the uh, next to the griddle that could be a nice little blender station perhaps if it's uh you know you're making margaritas and even though we didn't see one inside we do have one utensil drawer this is the best use of space i've ever seen under a sink and this little insert can actually pop out so if you want to uh, have like all your picnic utensils right here you can take them out and set them right on the table and just because they had some space, they said, we ain't gonna let it go to waste. And they gave us another full extension drawer over there, which I think is very cool. Now our underbelly is enclosed and it is forced air heated. There is a radiant barrier package option that you could apply to these, but that doesn't magically make this what people love to refer to as a four seasons camper. This is a good spring, summer, fall camper. Uh, radiant package may give you a, a better, more comfortable extended season, but short of it, like if it dipped a little bit below freezing tonight and came back, like it was 27 last night, this RV would have been fine, you know, cause now it's like 50 degrees today. Um, if uh, it's gonna stay, well below freezing well this ain't necessarily proven for all that noise now if you look on the back here you see that yellow sticker this is one of the quiet 2023 updates that the freedom express has started getting they are prepped for a uh, a, a class three uh, accessory receiver hitch on the back here now um that that means that basically it's made for like you know a bike rack maybe You've got a small portable generator. If you do want to do some boondocking, it's something that could do some work for you there. That is a rack and pinion slide, by the way. They're not using cable. They're not using Schwintech. Um, that is just, uh, generally speaking, based on the feedback I get from viewers, and owners, please feel free to chime in on this video or any video, but owners leaving feedback seem to regard rack and pinion as the best, most reliable slide system out there. It is the heaviest slide system, but it seems to be getting the job done. Um, all of our hookups also, I like how they're all back here, all at one smart centralized uh, location. 
Now up on the roof, there's not a whole lot to write home about necessarily. I do like though, there there is a key little detail here that seemingly innocuous little black hockey puck looking thing right there. That is a roof attic vent. So all the roof construction that I'm walking on right now, which obviously fully walkable if my fat butt can stay up here, um, it, it builds up heat when the sun's beating down on it. First of all, the full white exterior skin on this does help shed a lot of that heat. If I'm being picky, uh, I, I'm, I know they're doing the black roof shrouds because it looks cool. I would just prefer white personally. I just think it just eh, it's just less worry from the sun. But um, what was I getting at? Oh, the the white exterior will naturally reflect a lot of sun and keep it cool in here keep in mind uh the uh you have the ability to get the bigger air conditioner uh you can get the radiant package there's some things you can do to really help this one uh be able to handle like hot summer climates and then you see this little plug over here that is our roof solar prep plug by default it just has a plug on the roof and wiring that would go down to where a charge controller could be located there is a factory solar option it doesn't get too in depth i think it's about 175 200 watts something in there uh you know if you want some heavy solar you're gonna have to diy something but we can actually assist you with that at our stores now what's interesting is this floor plan, even though it was well preceded by the 238 BHS, this is almost intended as an offset sister to the Murphy bed bunkhouse model they have. I just mentioned the number, the 238 BHS. So if you like what you see, but you're like, I need more sleeping, they make a version like that. Or if you've only seen the one with the bunks and you don't need uh, bunks or anything like that, this could be the workaround for you here. And again, it's so rare to get a full featured big camp kitchen. I love that they're doing that. But that's not for everybody. Um, different strokes, different folks. I'll leave you a link in the video description to see where we have any of these in stock and what we're asking. If we have one in stock, it'll be right on our website for you. If not, our local team members can certainly assist you. And short of that, let me know what you think. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.